Who's a good boy? Today we are going to scratch build a rusty box car. Let's get rolling. First of all, we print out the grayscale image of the rail car so we can have a guide for scale. Now we can cut into the printout and trace parts directly onto EVA foam. An X-Acto knife is used to cut the various parts out. A Dremel is used to smooth out the sharp edges of the EVA foam. Bob Smith super glue is used for putting parts together. Wood dowels and wood sticks are used for support where EVA foam may not be enough. Various printer parts and wires are used under the box car to stand in for pipes and mechanical parts. A stiff piece of cardboard with 2 mm EVA foam and small dowel rods super glued on was employed to make the sliding door. Some thin aluminum was used to make the rails for the sliding doors to slide behind. EVA foam was cut at about 30 degree angles to look like corrugated steel on the ends of the rail car. The top of the box car was given its shape with a couple pieces of curved EVA foam and a long thin piece of EVA foam down the center. Two different shapes of foam are cut to represent the foam of the corrugated steel on top of the box car. Electric fence wire is a good stand in for the ladders on the box car. The wire is bent with a pair of pliers and the width of the pliers worked out just right. A punch was handy for hand drilling holes to attach the ladder rungs. The couplers were made with varying thicknesses of EVA foam. The EVA that was used in this project are 2, 4, 6, and 10 millimeter. Hollow steel arch hole punches were used to cut circle shapes. I used a variety of them on this project and they come in handy. The hollow steel arch hole punch was also used to make the wheels for the box car and wood dowel rods were also used. I needed a little larger hole cut for the wheel so I put an X-Acto blade in a compass and it really worked well. Once the wheels are cut out, assembly is pretty much straightforward. I made a cardboard template to cut out the shock absorber parts of the train wheels. Electric fence wire was wrapped around the dowel rods to make the springs for the wheels. Tin snips were used to cut the springs to the correct length.
Once the springs were glued into place, final assembly of the wheels is accomplished. Rail ties were cut out next and a Dremel was used to freehand some wood texture onto them. A base was made by gluing two floor mats together from Harbor Freight. Then the base was stiffened with the wire for support and rigidity. Train tracks were made by cutting three strips of EVA foam and gluing them together. A fine gravel was used as ballast under the tracks. To hold the gravel in place, I wetted the area with a 50-50 solution of water and 70% isopropyl alcohol. This helped the 50-50 solution of water and Mod Podge seep into the gravel easier. One quarter inch squares of two millimeter foam were cut to use as track supports. Then plastic rivets were placed to stand in for railroad spikes. One little rivet tried to escape. He'll be back. A black primer was applied to the train and the tracks to seal the foam prior to paint. Burnt sienna is applied to the tracks as the first layer of rust. Rub and buff silver was used to give a sparkle of shine to the tops of the tracks and the spikes and rail supports. The rub and buff was applied with a paper towel. The hairspray technique is a popular weathering technique used by modelers to create the effect of rusting and peeling paint on models. The technique involves applying a base color to the model, then hairspray is applied over the model in two to three light coats. After that, the desired color is painted on top of the hairspray. A thin coat of water is applied over the model where the paint is to be peeled away. With a large old brush, the area where the paint is to be weathered are brushed over. The wet hairspray lifts off and peels with the paint that was laid on top of it, revealing the base color painted in a suitable rust or metallic hue. After the blue paint is dry, more rust layers are applied to give a more realistic effect. A liner brush is used to apply a dark color to more recessed areas. An off-white is brushed over select areas to help fade the color and age the model. Lettering is applied with a white gel marker and then painted. And now on to the beauty shots. Thanks for watching.